let's say that I want to look at the um, cities that are within counties named Washington. Very odd request, but actually there was a research study a while back looking at uh, counties in the country that were named Washington and trying to trace back the reason they were named Washington. And obviously it ties back to General George Washington, our first president, uh, and some of the implications of that, that connection and what it meant for the communities that chose to take that name. Anyways, long story. In any case, we're looking to find out um, which cities are within counties named Washington. So another kind of containment, again, we're looking at doing a two-step process. We first have to identify the counties with the name Washington. So I'm going to clear the selected features, go to Selection, select by Attributes first, identify the counties that have the name Washington, name equals, so get unique values, but easier right here in the go to, type in, there it is, Washington, name equals Washington, so it's going to find all the counties that have name equals Washington, it's true. And we see quite a few, in fact, just out of curiosity, and that's 31 counties in the country with the name Washington. Okay, so now we want to find the cities that are in those counties. Okay, so again, that's clearly a select by location. This time I'm selecting features from what? From the cities, right? Because I'm looking for the cities that are within those particular counties, the ones that were selected. So I'll make sure cities is selected. That's the target layer, the thing being selected. The source layer course is the counties, right? And specifically the selected, the 31 counties that were selected. It's only going to look for those cities. So I'll hit OK. Okay. And then it's hard to see because the cities are of course smaller, but if we zoom in, right, we can see several cities in this particular county, right? And we can say, well, let's look at the attribute table. Okay, 29 cities, right? So oddly, that means then that there's actually one county without any cities in it. Well, it's probably because the layer for cities only includes cities of a certain size. All right, so let's look at a different example. So that's, a, again, just a con that's a containment exercise. Um, let's look at distance. So let's say that I'm doing a, a marketing survey, and I'm interested in knowing uh, which communities to reach out to. I'm doing some kind of big event in Denver. Colorado and I want to reach out to communities that I think might have people that would be interested in coming out to that event. And so I want to identify which communities to send information to. So let's say that I've determined that people will come a maximum of about 200 miles to travel to this event. So I want to identify all the communities that are within 200 miles of Denver. Okay, So that's my question. What communities are within 200 miles of Denver? So that, as you might figure out at this point, is a two-step process again. I have to find Denver first, and then I can identify all the cities that are within 200 miles of that. So first I'll select by attributes, and I'll look for cities, and I'm looking for Denver, name equals, and then looking for Denver. There it is. Now, just as a side note, I could have just typed in this SQL statement, name equals Denver, but the syntax, the way it's set up is really, really important. And this is a simple one, right? Name, which is the name of the field, all caps, notice it's got double quotes, equals, and then the word, uh, the name Denver, not all caps, right? It's written like sentence style with a single apostrophe or single quote rather than double quotes. Um, it's not complex, but if you leave out something in the wrong order, it won't work. So it's a lot easier to just double click when you're doing these simple uh, SQL statements. Okay, so I choose Denver, there it is. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a better look at it. Okay, and so we see a cluster of cities around it, but we're going out 200 miles. Okay, so now we're ready to do the select by location to identify the cities that fall within a 200 mile radius of Denver. So this will be a select by a location operation, right? Select by location. We're going to select features from cities, the ones that fall within 200 miles. But cities is also going to be our source layer, too, because it contains the selected city, or Denver, that is a point from which we measure, right? Because we're going to create a radius around the selected city and identify the cities that fall within that radius. 
So we specify the distance that we're interested in, 200 miles, make sure the units are correct. And then we say OK. OK, and very quickly, the cities that are within that radius of uh, 200 miles of Denver are selected. We can look at the attribute table to identify which ones those are. And we see that 50 cities um, fall are selected. But keep in mind that one of these is Denver, so actually it's 49 cities that are uh, within 200 miles of Denver. So there we go, pretty quickly. We can identify proximity using a uh, select by location. So I want to show you uh, a similar operation with the same basic result, but using the geoprocessing tools. So you've read a little bit about geoprocessing, but we don't really use it too much in the exercises. So, but I want to show you how they work and how they're different. Um, but you're not responsible for this that I'm going to cover this moment. Okay, so I'm going to select um, Denver one more time. Select by attributes. It's already the statement's still there because that's the last operation I ran. So I hit OK. Denver selected again. And rather than using select by location, what I'm going to do is use a geoprocessing tool under the geoprocessing menu, and I'm going to choose a buffer. And the buffer is going to create a, a new layer that is a radius of 200 miles around Denver. All right, and then I can use that buffer either for mapping or to continue the analysis. So the input feature here is cities, right? That's the layer that contains the, the selected city of Denver. The output feature class means that it's going to create a new layer and for the buffer. And it's going to be called cities buffer 5. And it's an arbitrary name. And for now, it's that's fine. We'll just take that. And the linear units are miles, so 200 miles. Okay. And there's other options down here, but for the moment, we're just going to take those default values. So I hit OK. And it takes a while it's running. And then it'll pop up and tell me that it ran. There you go. You can see the buffer right away. And so we see this circle um, surrounding Denver. And that's at 200 mile radius around Denver. So you can graphically see it. But also, if you look in the table of contents, this highlighted item here is the buffer. It's an entirely new GIS layer, and you can take it into other GIS systems if you wanted to do mapping to kind of illustrate what it is that we were doing or what you saw or what that or what 200 miles actually means. So I want to use this though to go further. Say I'm continuing my spatial analysis. I'm still interested in identifying those cities um, that are within that radius. So I'm going to clear the selection for a moment, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an intersect function. And you've read a bit about intersect, and, we, and the, the, that word gets thrown around a bit. So under the geoprocessing tools, there is a tool called Intersect. And what Intersect does is very uh, well, is analogous to the AND um, Boolean operator. Because what Intersect is going to do is it's going to allow us to essentially say, where do we find cities and the buffer? Where do these two things intersect? Where do they overlap? Where do they occupy the same space? Right? That's essentially what we mean by Intersect. Right? So the input features in this case are the cities and the buffer, because we're looking to see where these two layers overlap. What, are, what space do they share in common? Right? What features do they share in common? Again, because it's a geoprocessing operation, it's going to create a new GIS layer. And this one, again, in arbitrary name that appends the two, uh, uses the word cities and intersect. Uh, other, there's other parameters, but for the moment, we'll just take the default. So I hit OK. It'll run. You'll see it's running in the lower right corner. And I get a report. And if you look closely enough, you'll see there's a new point layer at, added called Cities Intersect 2. And let me change the symbology for the points here so you can kind of get, get the point, understand um, the difference. So I'll just choose a bright green circle there. And so what you see are these are the cities that fall within that 200 mile radius around Denver. The difference is that these aren't just highlighted, they're not just selected. You actually have an entirely new GIS layer that only consists of those 50 cities that fell within that radius, right? So then you could take these and use them for other processes or mapping or, or for other functions. So the geoprocessing works in a very similar way to the uh, select by location operations. The difference being that geoprocessing just creates new layers out of those, um, out of the processes that you create. So two ways of doing accomplishing somewhat similar things, uh, but they all carry a lot of possibilities depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So there you go.